welcome to lecture number 8 uh, an online uh, the NPTEL online certification course on bioreactors. When we finished up the last lecture we had looked at a problem on in exi enzyme inhibition. Uh, before that in the lecture itself we had looked at three types of inhibitions um, the competitive inhibition, the non-competitive inhibition and the uncompetitive inhibition which were uh, different in the way the inhibitor affects the reaction. In the, in the first case the inhibitor uh, bound to the enzyme, in the second case the inhibitor bound to the enzyme substrate complex uh, and in the third case it bound to both. The, uh, but the, the uh, I think I mixed up the last two, but you get the idea. The where the inhibitor binds made the difference. And then we looked at a problem uh, which could uh, help us understand this a little better. Let us uh, work out that problem in this lecture. Practice problem 2.2 An enzyme normally displays Michaelis Menten behavior in converting a substrate S to a product P. It gave the following data when it is uh, Michaelis Menten parameters uh, for the above conversion were estimated in the presence of another substance I at different concentration. Determine the type of inhibition and the inhibition constant. The Michaelis Menten parameters Vm and Km at different uh, inhibitor concentrations were given in this table. Now how do we go about it? Let us ask our regular question what is needed, the type of inhibition and the inhibition constant K i. What is known or given, the data on the Michaelis Menten parameters V m and K m at different inhibitor concentrations are given. And how to connect what is needed to what is given? We have seen that V m and K m change differently with i for different types of inhibitions. I myself got a little confused but that is okay, uh, with practice you should be fine. For the competitive inhibition V equals V m s by K m <coughs> into 1 plus i by K i plus s, the K m gets modified. For the non-competitive inhibition the V m gets modified and for the uncompetitive inhibition both V m and K m got modified in this fashion. In this, fashion. <coughs> this is a summary. The type of inhibition is competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive. In the case of a competitive inhibition, V m remains the same, there is no change whereas K m changes. In the case of non-competitive, V m changes but K m does not change and in uncompetitive, both V m and K m change. So we need to find out what changes here. Now if we look at the data, if we inspect the data, it tells us that V m does not change with i, but K m changes. Let me show this to you here. The data was uh, this. As the inhibitor concentration changed 0 0.51, 5 and 10, the V max remained the same at 0.33, right? whereas K m changed. Okay. This is uh, what we uh, saw, what we said earlier and this is what the data shows us. So, this is clearly a case of competitive inhibition. So, that is straightforward. So, that is the first question, what kind of a competition uh, it is. So, for competitive inhibition, this K m dash, the new K m is K m times 1 plus i by K i, right. And uh, K m dash is K m by K i into i plus K m. I have written it of a form of y equals m x plus c. Remember we are dealing with a set of data here. Therefore, whenever we deal with data, we need to use the entire set of data. If you just pick points from there, the errors in the data collection would directly get transferred and uh, probably get magnified. If you are using the data point which happened to be incorrect, then the errors would be large in the estimates. 
that's the reason why we need to use the entire set of data whenever we have data to work with and we are trying to use the entire set of data to find whatever is necess necessary here which is the inhibition constant to do that i'm looking at this in a y equals mx plus c form km dash is y i is x and the slope in that case is km by ki and the intercept is km we have data of um, vm km with varying i's so i is the independent x coordinate km dash the modified km is the y coordinate if we plot it that way then we could get km K, uh, ki from here and km from the intercept this is what we just mentioned when we it's uh, good to repeat this when we uh, have a set of data it's best to use all the relevant ones if we plot km dash versus i we would get the slope as km by ki and thus we could find ki the let me show you the working as a spreadsheet I have i here and km dash uh, from the table given here. This is for plotting. When I plotted this, I got uh, km dash versus i as this. The uh, equation was uh, y equals 0.012x plus 0.12. Uh, y in this case is km dash, x is i. So km dash is 0.012i plus 0.12. That is what is uh, shown here in this graph, the same graph copy pasted <coughs> km dash versus i. Uh, so the slope km by ki is 0 0.012 and uh, therefore ki is nothing but km by 0 0.012 from here. We also know and that is uh, km we know from the intercept to be 0 0.12. So 0 0.12 by 0 0.012 is 10. So the inhibitor constant happens to be 10 millimolar. Right? I think that is uh, good enough for uh, this lecture that covered the practice problem. Let us meet in the next lecture to take module 2 forward. See you then.